What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here. In this video, we gotta find the domain of these three functions over here. So notice they're very similar functions. Notice the numerators are the same, x plus five. But notice the denominators are a little different. Here we got x squared minus x minus 12. Here we have the square root of that same expression. And then here we have the third root of that same expression. So kind of similar, but the domains are going to be different. So starting with number one, we got f of x equals x plus five over x squared minus x minus 12. Now, if you remember with rational functions, basically the denominator can never equal zero. Because if the denominator is equal to zero at a certain x value, the function would be undefined then because we'd have a number divided by zero. Or sometimes we'll even have zero divided by zero. Sometimes a numerator could be zero at that x value as well. And when this happens, usually there's two reasons. It's because there's a vertical asymptote in the function or there's a hole in the function. And either case is a break in the domain. Either case is gonna affect that domain. So what we can do here is we can actually try to figure out when does x squared minus x minus 12 equal zero? And notice we could figure it out pretty easily because we could factor this. So this would be x minus four, x plus three. When does that equal zero? Basically when x minus four equals zero, so when x is equal to four, or when x plus three is equal to zero, when x is equal to negative three. So notice for this function, x cannot equal four, x cannot equal negative three. Okay, and more specifically, the reason why is because at those x values, again, the denominator is gonna be zero. And more specifically, graphically, I'm not gonna graph it, but the way, what it would be is both of these would be vertical asymptotes. The way I know that is because at those x values, there's gonna be a number in the numerator. So whenever you have a number divided by zero, it's usually because there's a vertical asymptote. But if you ever get a case where there's zero over zero, usually that's because there's gonna be a hole. Okay, so if we had like uh, x minus four up here, then notice that the x minus four would cancel out. And so at an x value of four, there would be a hole there. But either way, whether it's a vertical asymptote or a hole, x cannot equal four. So to write that nicer, we can say the domain is x can be anything. However, x cannot equal negative three or x cannot equal positive four like that. And if you want to write it in a different notation, you can also say x is an element um, and then you'd go from the left side, the, the um, minimum of the domain, all the way to the maximum. So notice all the x values can go from negative infinity to negative three. It wouldn't be inclusive of this negative three, so we would put a circle bracket there. Then we would put a union symbol here, and basically what that means is x can be in this set, or in this set that I'm about to write from negative three to four, not inclusive of both of them. And then it could be from four to positive infinity, like that. All right, so both of these mean the same thing. They're just uh, different formats to show it, All right? And then again, these are the circle, bracket, uh, circle brackets because we're not including the negative three. Remember, x cannot equal negative three. And then here, x cannot equal four. So that is the answer to number one. What about number two? Notice that it's the exact same thing, except there's a square root now. And when there's a square root, it actually adds more to the problem because not only can the denominator not equal zero, so we definitely know the, the um, the x value, the x values cannot equal negative three, 
x values cannot equal 4 as we got up there because notice we'll get 0 in the denominator there and the square root of 0 is just 0 again. So the function would be undefined. But because there's a square root here, you also have to make sure that what's under that square root is greater than 0 because you can't take the square root of a negative number. And actually, you can't take the eventh root of a negative number. So notice that this is the square root, so there's like an imaginary 2 there, but there could have also been a 4 here, or a 6, the 6th root, or the 8th root, the 10th root, any even root. This expression under that even root would have to be greater than zero. Now, if it was just that by itself, it would be greater than or equal to zero, right? If this wasn't in a denominator, let's pretend, because you can take the square root of zero. You could take the fourth root of zero. But it can't be zero either because it's in a denominator. So that's why I didn't write greater than or equal to zero. I just wrote that it has to be greater than zero. But again, if it was by itself, it was if the function was just the square root of x squared minus x minus 12, then the domain would be when x squared minus x minus 12 is greater than or equal to 0. So thought I would mention that. But again, it can't be 0 in the denominator. So we're looking for when it is positive. So this one's a little more complex than just finding when it's equal to 0, which is at these x values. So what we would do here is you could factor this, x minus 4, x plus 3, like we did before. And when is that going to be greater than 0? Well, notice this is just a quadratic with intercepts at 4 and negative 3. And notice that it opens up because that a value is positive. There's like a positive 1 there. And so if we graph this, if we graph this quadratic, this is how it looks like. And so when is it going to be greater than 0? It's going to be greater than 0 here and here. Basically, when is it above the x-axis? So it's going to be when x is greater than 4 and when x is less than negative 3, like that. So notice over here, and including these points where it's 0, negative 3 and 4, that can't be part of this domain because any x values between negative 3 and 4 is going to make this whole expression negative and you can't take the square root of a negative. Versus up here, it can be negative, right? There's no square roots of anything, so you could take a positive number divided by a negative or a negative divided by a negative or a negative divided by a positive, it doesn't matter, right? You just got to make sure that it's not equal to 0. But here, there's a little bit more of a restriction because we're taking the eventh root of that expression. So it has to be positive. Okay, so um, that is the domain right there. x has to be greater than 4. x has to be less than negative 3 for this. So to make it look nicer, if we put it in these formats, we'll have the domain uh, xer but x has to be less than negative 3, and x has to be greater than 4, like that. Okay, so it can't be between negative 3 and 4, like it was over here. And then if we put in this notation, we could say x is an element from negative infinity to negative 3, not inclusive of negative 3, so we got that circle bracket there, and from positive 4 to positive infinity. So exact same thing as up here, except for that middle part. Can't be that middle part because it would be negative there. So that would be the domain for this function. And again, it this would be the domain as well if this was the fourth root or the sixth root or the eighth root, right? If it was any eventh root, this would still be the domain. But what if it's an odd root? What would happen there? Well, actually for this function, it's going to be the exact same domain as up here. Why? Because you could take the odd root of a negative number. So for example, like the third root of negative 8 is just negative 2. 
okay? But you can't take the square root of negative eight or the fourth root of negative eight. If you plug this in your calculator, you'd get this, but if you plug these into your calculator, it would be undefined. So the third root of an expression, it can be negative, right? So the domain of this function is gonna be the exact same as the domain of the first function because the x value can be between negative three and four. It still can't be zero here, right? So at that x value negative three, at that x value of four, notice we'll end up with the third root of zero, which is just zero still, and you can't divide by zero. So there's still those restrictions, but this can be negative, and any odd root. If this was the fifth root, or the seventh root, the ninth root, you could always take the odd root of a negative number. Uh, this was the third root. So it would basically be the exact same answer. X cannot equal negative three or X cannot equal four. And if we write it in the other format, we'll have negative infinity to negative three and our, or, uh, or rather, rather, this means or in set theory, uh, negative three to four or from four to positive infinity, like that. Exact same as up here, right? So the most restrictive domain was this second function here because it was an even root. And so that expression under the square root had to be positive.